Oh, so like them, everybody. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Whoops. Praise, be, praise belongs to Allah. We praise him and we ask him for guidance and forgiveness. We seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and the evil of our actions. Whom Allah guides, no one can lead them astray. And whom he makes astray, no one can lead them back to the right path. I bear witness that there is no deity but Allah alone uh, with no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and messenger of Allah. You who believe, be mindful of God, as is his due, and make sure you devote yourselves to him to your dying moment. Believers, be mindful of God, speak in a direct fashion and to good purpose, and he will put your deeds right for you and forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys God and his messenger will truly achieve a great triumph. Assalamu alaikum, my dear sisters and brothers. Again, I am grateful to Allah that we have uh, been able to come together again on this Jummah, on this Friday to share, um, you know, some time for the spiritual benefit and for the sake of Allah. So as I've done for the past uh, four times I've been with you all, we are going to continue with the story of Musa. And again, as a reminder, I'm primarily sharing the story of Musa from both the Quran, in which I will indicate which chapter and verses are being quoted, and also for, from uh, another source that offers some additional context and details. So previously, we learned that Musa, uh, while on his journey back to Egypt with his family, had come up, come upon a flame at the top of a mountain. Um, and there he had his first conversations, direct conversations with Allah. And on that dark night in the shadow of Mount Tur, God conferred prophethood on Musa. His first command uh, was for him, Musa, to go to Pharaoh. And in Surah Al-Taha, Verse 24, Allah says very blatantly, go to Pharaoh, for he has truly become a tyrant. So, you know, Musa had fled Egypt in fear of his life. He had spent 10 years in the, in the country outside of the jurisdiction of Pharaoh. And now God is telling him that he must face his biggest fear. He must face the corrupt Pharaoh, the man Musa was sure would want to see him executed. Uh, Musa once again felt that the fear that uh, that had sustained him during his long journey across the desert, he now felt it again. And so he responded to God's words. Um, in Surah al verse 33, Moses says, My Lord, I killed one of their men, and I fear that they may kill me. Uh, Musa was afraid, but he understood that God was completely able to provide him with the support he needed for a mission, um, even though that mission appeared to be virtually impossible. Musa made supplication. He begged for strength and ease of his most and ease in his most difficult mission. He asked uh, he asked Allah to open his chest and grant him eloquence, self confidence, and contentment. He also called upon God to strengthen him with a trusted and capable companion in prophethood, his brother Harun. The dialogue between Allah and Musa is one of the most amazing conversations contained in the pages of the Quran. The words of God are delivered with eloquence and clarity. They paint a portrait of a strong yet humble man enthralled by his encounter with God. They deliver the incredible sense that God is the all-powerful, omnipotent, yet God is filled with mercy and love towards his slaves. So um, there is a, a passage in Surah uh, Taha, so this from verse uh, 25 to 48, in which uh, the Quran says, Moses said, Lord, uh, lift up my heart and ease my task for me. Untie my tongue so that they may understand my words and give me a helper from my family, my brother Aaron. Augment my strength through him. Let him share my task so that we can glorify you much and remember you often. You are always watching over us. And God responded by saying, uh, Moses, your request is granted. Indeed, we showed you favor before. We inspired your mother saying, put your child into, uh, in the chest and then place him in the river. Let the river wash onto its banks and he will be taken by an enemy of mine and his. I showered you with uh, my love and planned that you should be reared under my watchful eye. Your sister went out saying, I will tell you someone who will nurse him. And we returned you to your mother so that she could rejoice and not grieve. Later, you killed a man, and we saved you from distress and tried you with other tests. 
You stayed among the people of Midian for years. Then you came here as I ordained. I have chosen you for myself. Go, you and your brother, with my signs, and make sure that you remember me. Go, both of you, to Pharaoh, for he has exceeded all bounds. Speak to him gently, so that he may take heed or show respect. They said, Lord, we fear he will do us great harm or exceed all bounds. He said, do not be afraid. I am with you both, hearing and seeing everything. Go and tell him, we are your Lord's messengers, so send the children of Israel with us and do not oppress them. We have brought you a sign from your Lord. Peace be upon whoever follows the right guidance. It has been revealed that the punishment falls on whoever rejects the truth and turns his back on it. So this short and astounding conversation with um, with Allah, you know, has really it, it has completely changed Moses' life. Right? Here he thought he was just going to Egypt to maybe see some family, stumbles upon a flame, and it is revealed that God has been watching him and guiding him and protecting him from day one. You know, it taught him lessons about himself, about the world, about nature, about the nature of humankind, and most importantly of all, about the nature of God. And to this day, it continues to teach important lessons to humankind. On a daily basis, the words of the Quran change lives, right? We know this. The lessons learned in the story of Musa are as relevant today as they were thousands of years ago, right? Which is why we're going through his story together. Um, by reading the story of Musa, so far we have learned the importance of trusting God. We have learned that human beings plan and scheme, but God's plans plan can overcome any, um, any triumph test or trial. The story of Musa has taught us that there is no relief from the torments of this world except with remembrance and closeness to God. The story of Musa teaches us that God can replace weakness with strength and failure with victory, and that God supports the righteous from sources unimaginable. Now, as God confers prophet on, on Moses and his brother Aaron, we learn the true meaning of brotherhood and the true meaning of why choosing righteous companions can be the key to paradise. Uh, Musa wanted his brother to be his companion in prophethood um, and on this dangerous mission to confront Pharaoh because Aaron was strong and trustworthy, and he was also an articulate and persuasive speaker. Whenever a person stands with his brother or sister united in a common sense of purpose, united in their worship of God, united in righteousness, they are unbeatable against even the most formidable enemy. Ibn Kathir uh, narrates that Musa and Harun went together to Pharaoh and delivered their message. Musa goes on to speak to Pharaoh about God, God's mercy, and the promise of paradise, and about their obligation of humankind to worship God alone. And we'll learn more about their conversation, the conversation between Musa and between uh, between Musa and Pharaoh, uh, the next inshallah, the next time. Um, but for today, this is where we will pause the part of, of Musa's story. Uh, I say this saying of mine, and I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and for the rest of the Muslims, so ask him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalam, ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah and exaltations be to Allah. The blessings and peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. So uh, there's a lesson in this segment of Musa's story that I would like to, to emphasize. Um, and by reading the story of Musa so far, we've learned the, the importance of trusting God. We've learned that human beings plan and scheme, but God's plan can overcome any triumph, test, or trial. And the story of Musa has taught us that there is no relief from the torments of this world except with remembrance and closeness to God. So earlier this week, I read something that kind of caught my attention. And it said, Iman, or faith, and God consciousness are reasons for tests and trials. And it took me a few minutes um, to process. And initially, I kind of thought it was a bit of a typo. I thought what was meant to be said is that the tests and the trials are part of, of our existence and only through Iman and God consciousness, we can overcome them. Um, so that only if we're steadfast and unwavering, if we have that, that unwavering trust in Allah, 
that we can overcome any trial or test. But then I read the following verse from Surah Al-Baqarah. This is verse 214. Allah says, do you suppose that you will enter the garden without first having suffered like those before you? They were afflicted by misfortune and hardship, and they were so shaken, even their messenger and the believers with him cried, we will, when, will we, when will God's help arrive? Truly, God's help is near. And so what this verse reminds us is that the best of creation, the messengers and the prophets, peace be upon all of them, were the most severely tested. The trials they faced are unbearable for others. The reward for the steadfast um, is for, for steadfastness in tests and trials is paradise. And it is as vast as the heavens and earth. Paradise is surrounded by the disliked, just as hell is surrounded by the desires, right? Something to, to think about. So if we look at an example, a moment during the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, he was asked, which of the peoples is tried the most severely? And he responded, the prophets, then those nearest to them, then those nearest to them. A person is tried according to their religion. If they are firm in their faith, then their trials will be more severe. And if they are frail in their faith, then they are tried according to the strength of their faith. Uh, the, the, sorry, according to the strength of their faith. The servant shall continue to be tried until they are left walking upon the earth without any sins. So that's a that's a hadith. And if we look at, um, you know, the the seer of the prophet, the biography of the prophet, um, let's remember that during the the month of Shawwal, in the fifth year of Hijra, Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him and his companions, may Allah be pleased with them. They faced a very severe trial. The Arabs had besieged them in one united front, and multitudes of polytheists gathered against them. They encountered, encountered the treachery of the tribe of Banu Nadir and the abandonment of the hypocrites in an incident called the Battle of Ahsad, Confederates. Uh, and clear verses were revealed describing the severity and hardship. Uh, and those verses will be recited until the end of time. So what had happened is, you know, the Quraysh were seeking revenge uh, for their defeat at Badr. And they were encouraged by a group from the Banu Nadir, who were bitter because they had been expelled from Medina to Khaybar. Um, and they were expelled because they, they broke the treaty with the Muslims. So a group of them got, went to Mecca, and they encouraged the uh, polytheists in Mecca to attack Medina. And they sent another delegation to another tribe in Central Arabia, one of the largest tribes, the Gafen, uh, and they enticed them to, to ally with the polytheists. So you have these, these multiple now tribes that are unifying, hence the Confederates, uh, to go against the Muslims. Um, and they you know, set their, their sights for Medina. When the Prophet Sallallahu learned of their approach, he consulted his companions, and one companion, Salman the Persian, may Allah be pleased with him, suggested digging a trench right around to prevent the polytheists from reaching Medina, which the Muslims did. And if you know, I'm not going to go too much into the details of this incident, but um, basically they were they were besieged uh, by the polytheists, by the hypocrites, by by their enemies. And that besiegement created a very severe starvation. Um, and on top of it, they're busy digging this trench. So they're hungry, um, they're cold, it's winter. Uh, they're having to dig this trench. They've got no food, no sustenance, very limited resources. And um, it is incredibly exhausting. Um, and uh, so, you know, this moment was one, it was, it was a trial of, of severe distress. And the only way they were going to survive this if, is with very strong faith. Okay. Um, so you, if you can just imagine the combination of fear and hunger on a weak human, you know, how that's going to affect their psyche. They have a fierce enemy besieging the city that is absolutely intent on annihilating the Muslims. And they're outnumbered. Okay, by some say by threefold. 
Um, and, you know, you think about this and who could stand, who could, how, how difficult must it be to stand firm in the face of such an immense trial? And the Quran says very precisely and eloquently, it describes this trial and the severe distress that befell the believers. Uh, Surah Al-Ahzab, verses 10 through 12 say, they massed against you from above and below. Your eyes rolled with fear. Your hearts rose into your throats and you thought ill thoughts of Allah. There the believers were so sorely tested and deeply shaken. The hypocrites and the sick of heart said, God and his messenger promised us nothing but, delu but delusions. So cold, starving, weak, uncertain of the future, surrounded by the enemy. The, this is the ultimate test. And what saves them? Steadfastness in, in the trust of Allah. Allah tells us very clearly what their fate will be in the hereafter. Paradise is saved for those who endure tests and trials and who remain firm in their iman, right? Their faith, of, uh, their faith in Allah. Um, I mean, can you imagine getting to this point where your faith is tested with these types of trials, just so you can be given the rewards of paradise. You know, if we think back of that, how I started the second part, I mean, this is the apex of Iman. This is this is the the pinnacle of, of good faith, of strong faith. And we know that Allah gives us these stories to reflect on, these stories that are within the Quran. Um, and, you know, I, I chose this story for a reason, because we're seeing a similar story play out right now, right? You have Gaza, you have Sudan, you have Bangladesh now and elsewhere. You have people who are fighting for truth and justice, who are um, weighed down by severe hardships, hardships that are really unfathomable to the vast majority of us who, who live a comfort, a comfortable life, okay? And we have we have people. You look at Gaza, for instance, and they are the, you know they are surrounded by a unified uh, confederacy of enemies who are doing everything in their power to suppress the truth. All right, these people are the pharaohs of our time. Right when Allah says to Musa, Pharaoh has exceeded all bounds. Right, Pharaoh is a tyrant. We have we have examples of that type of person in this day. And if you think of Pharaoh being the epitome of, of evil and uh, of, of tyranny, you know, this is even, Pharaoh was even worse than what we have today. And, and that is so hard to imagine because what we are witnessing now is nearly unfathomable. So if we go back to Musa, right, and his acceptance of the command from Allah, right, to go and face Pharaoh, and we think about how that moment played out. Allah chose Musa to confront Pharaoh because according to Allah, Pharaoh had become a tyrant. Musa immediately recognizes not only the gravity of this command, but also what tools he'll need to take this on, to take this task on. What's interesting is he didn't ask Allah for an army and he didn't ask Allah for weapons. He didn't even ask for physical strength or magic, right? That was kind of the, the currency of the day. He asked Allah to lift his heart, to ease the task, to untie his tongue so that they may understand his words. And he asked for a helper, his own brother. He wanted a partner to share this task with knowing that the ultimate goal is going to Pharaoh. The ultimate goal in going to Pharaoh was to glorify and worship Allah. This is in the Quran, in the verses I mentioned above. So we think about today and we think very recently, let's think of two days ago. Um, there was an image that emerged and it was an image of a brave, unwavering soul who sat among a room full of pharaohs who, although not saying a single word, managed to speak with an untied tongue so that her message was conveyed in the most understandable way. And similar to what the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and his companions faced during the Battle of the Trench, she was surrounded by a confederacy of unified, united enemies who were dead set 
on lifting up lies and falsities and who applauded the criminality and glorified the oppression. Do they not know that truly God's help is near? So I mentioned these stories with the goal of using them as a reminder that Allah promises certain things and it is in within our right to ask Allah for them. And so I ask Allah that may we all face trials and tests that will give us the opportunity to glorify Allah. And may those who are enemies, those who are the enemies of Allah, may they be destroyed. Because again, in Surah Al-Taha, Allah tells us, peace be upon whoever follows the right guidance. It has been revealed to us that punishment falls on whoever rejects the truth and turns their back on it. Allah, please accept our good deeds and our good intentions, forgive our shortcomings and missteps, and allow us to experience many more moments together. O Allah, grant us the good things in this world and the good things in the next life and save us from the punishment of the fire. O Allah, aid us in accepting the tests and tribulations of this life and give us the strength to overcome any challenge we may face. O Allah, rid us of our fear, anxiety, despair, and sorrow and replace in us a sense of serenity and tranquility. O Allah, we ask you to place peace and solace in the hearts of those suffering any injustice. O Allah, give us the strength to confront the pharaohs of our day, ease our task, and untie our tongues so that they will hear our words. O Allah, we hope for your mercy. Do not leave us to ourselves, even for the blinking of an eye. Correct each of our affairs for us. There is none worthy of worship but you. And if I have said anything of truth, it is from Allah alone, and my gratitude goes to Allah. And if I have said anything that was not of truth, then that is from my own ego, and I ask Allah for forgiveness for that transgression. Amin.